In this video, we're going to talk about the type 1 and type 2 error that you need to understand in a typical statistics course. The type 1 error occurs when you reject a null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. The type 2 error occurs when you fail to reject the null hypothesis when it's false. The probability of making a type 1 error, given that the null hypothesis is true, this is alpha. The probability of making a type 2 error when HO is false is beta. And the probability of rejecting a false null hypothesis is 1 minus beta. That's also referred to as the power of the test. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a table that's going to summarize all of this. Bear with me uh, one moment. So here we have HO, the null hypothesis. And there's two possibilities. Either HO is true or it's false. We can't control that. What we can control is our decisions. We can choose to reject the null hypothesis, or we can fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means that we accept it. So those are our, our two options. So let's say if the null hypothesis is true, and we reject it when it's true. That's an error. Specifically, that is a type 1 error. Now, if the null hypothesis is false, and we reject it, then we've made a good decision. That is not an error. Now, if the null hypothesis is true and we fail to reject it or we accept it, that is also a good decision. But if the null hypothesis is false and we don't reject it, that's bad. We don't want to accept a false null hypothesis. So that's another error. That is the type two error. So hopefully this table helps you to see the difference between a type 1 error and a type 2 error. The type 1 error occurs when the null hypothesis is true and we make a bad decision. We reject it. The type 2 error occurs when the null hypothesis is false and we make a bad decision. We don't reject it. Now let's work on some example problems. Number one, let's say that the null hypothesis HO is this statement. John's used car is safe to drive. So that's the null hypothesis. Part A. Which statement represents a type 1 error? And we could also do part B simultaneously. Which statement represents a type 2 error? So what I like to do is distinguish the good decisions from the bad ones. Let's look at answer choice A first. John thinks that his car may be safe when, in fact, it is not safe. Is that a good decision or a bad decision? Let's say if he drives his car believing that it's safe when it's really not safe. That's a bad decision. That would be an error. B. John thinks that his car may be safe when, it in, when in fact, it is safe. If, it's, if the car is safe and he decides to drive it, that is not a bad decision. That's a good one. C, John thinks that his car may not be safe when, in fact, it is not safe. So if the car is not safe and he doesn't drive it, that's a good decision. D, John thinks that his car may not be safe when, in fact, it is safe. That's a bad decision. If the car is good to drive and he doesn't drive it, that's not really helpful. So that's an error right there. Now we want to identify the type 1 error so we can eliminate answer choice B and C. Now looking at answer choice A, would you say it's a type 1 error or a type 2 error? Feel free to pause the video and think about it for a moment. Now remember, the type 1 error occurs when we reject the null hypothesis when HO is true. 
It never occurs when HO is false. The type 2 error, this one occurs when we don't reject the null hypothesis when HO is false. So at this point, we need to determine when HO is true and when HO is false. So we know HO is, John's used car is safe to drive. Answer choice A is saying that it's not safe to drive. So it's saying that the null hypothesis is false because it doesn't agree with it. So since we have a false HO and he fails to reject the false HO, this is a type 2 error. Now looking at the other option, we could see that it agrees with the null hypothesis. The car is safe to drive. However, he doesn't accept it. He rejects the car. He doesn't feel that it's safe. So this is a type one error. He rejects the null hypothesis when it is true. So that's a simple way to distinguish a type one error from a type two error. Now let's move on to part C. Which type of error has greater consequence? Would you say it's the type two error or the type one error? Well, let's look at answer choice D first. D says the car is safe, but John doesn't believe that it's safe to drive. So if he feels that way, he's probably not gonna drive the car. He's probably gonna stay at home, eat some pizza, watch TV. And that decision really doesn't have a significant consequence. He's gonna continue to be alive, so he's not going to get into a car accident. Now, looking at the type two error in answer choice A, if the car is not safe to drive, but he believes that it's safe and he goes and drives the vehicle, gets into a car accident, ends up in the hospital, that's pretty bad. I mean, he could lose his life. So answer choice A, the type two error, has greater consequence because if he makes that error, it can cost him big time. It can cost him his life. Now, for the sake of practice, let's work on another example. Number two, in a criminal court case, the null hypothesis HO is that the defendant is presumed innocent. Part A, which statement represents a type one error? And B, which statement represents a type two error? Well, let's distinguish the good decisions from the bad ones. Looking at answer choice A, the jury believes that the defendant is guilty when in fact he is innocent. That's not good. So if they pronounce him guilty when he is innocent, that is a bad decision. That is an error. Part B, the jury believes that the defendant is guilty when in fact he is not innocent. Okay, that's a good decision. If he's not innocent, he's guilty. So let's put a check for that one. C, the jury believes that the defendant is not guilty when in fact he is not innocent. If he's not innocent, he's guilty. And if they believe he's not guilty, that is an error. D, the jury believes that the defendant is not guilty when in fact he is innocent. If he's innocent, he's not guilty. So that is a good decision. So now let's analyze the two errors that we have. B and D have been eliminated because those are not errors. So let's focus on answer choice A. The jury believes that the defendant is guilty when in fact he is innocent. So HO says that he is innocent. So answer choice A is saying that HO, the null hypothesis is true. However, the jury rejects HO when it is true. They believe he is guilty when he is innocent. So therefore, this is going to be a type one error. Now, what about C? C disagrees with HO. So basically, answer choice C is saying that the null hypothesis is false. He is not innocent but the jury believes that the defendant is not guilty. They believe that he is innocent. 
So they fail to reject the false null hypothesis. And this is a type 2 error. They're accepting a false null hypothesis. Now let's move on to part C. Which type of error has greater consequence? Would you say it's the type 1 error or the type 2 error? Looking at the type 1 error, here we have a man who is innocent, but the jury believes that he is guilty. And as a result, if he does prison time when he's innocent, that is a very, very bad thing that should happen. Now looking at answer choice C, here we have a man that's not innocent, but the jury believes that he's not guilty. They believe that he's innocent. That's also a bad decision, but who knows, next time he does something bad, he may get caught. However, having an innocent man being punished for something that he hasn't done, that is very, very bad. So I believe that is that type of error has the greater consequence. You might feel differently, but that's just my opinion on it. So that's it for this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, thanks again for watching.